Hi, Eva, and welcome back. Hi, Alina. Nice to see you. Today, we are making a special recording of our conversation as we are finding ourselves in a very special time of, of the year. And an interesting topic for uh, this time that is um, special for us both in, in some way because uh, we are uh, soon celebrating our birthdays. So it's uh, yeah. the birthday month for <laughs> both of us. Um, an interesting topic to, to have in our conversation would be how we can see uh, life as, as something that has rhythm, as something that is like um, going in, in, a, in a circle and although a cer circle has no beginning and no end, uh, life as we know it on this planet has some reference points that mark the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. And how we personally refer to, to these passages that we go throughout uh, life with um, meaning and how we can best find an appropriate rhythm for, for these passages to happen. Mm -hmm. So my first question to you would be, how, how do you see this, this concept? Yeah, you know, um, you're actually touching a really big question um, for me. Um, as you were mentioning, um, this is the month of our, both of our birthday. Mine um, is going to be in about um, five days from now. And it's a pretty remarkable um, day for me because it's um, the 50. And somehow I felt that I'm entering a new life cycle um, period. And um, it, it actually was brought to my attention as I came back from a workshop that I was co-conducting with my Chinese friend at a temple and he introduced me to the life cycle and um, the life cycle is a model that I've been using since then quite a bit and it's basically a very universal very archetypal idea and I could I could um, connect it to the seasons you know the four seasons that here where I live in Cologne in Germany, um, actually in my, you know, in my youth growing up, uh, we really had four seasons. There was spring, clearly in springtime. In, in, in the summer, July, there was summertime. And, and then there was, um, you know, tilting from the end of September towards the beginning of October, there was clearly autumn time. And then moving very clearly into December, moving into winter time. And then I do remember there was a period of my life where it seemed that the seasons were not very clear anymore. It seems there was not clear spring. It's almost like it, it was getting a little wishy-washy. And interesting enough, I felt this challenging year with the coronavirus all of a sudden this the clearness of the season seemed to be coming back again it was almost like spring was clearly spring the way i do remember it as a child growing up and also right now we're really heading into the summertime it's been really sunny it's been really hot it's been really warm so somehow, in a really interesting way, I, I feel um, the clear distinctions of the different um, nature seasons um, have come back to, at least to my attention. That's how I experience it. And as I was introduced to the life cycle model, um, I was looking at it from 
also the development idea of our uh, ages of our growing up, like spring being the season of our birth and then coming out into the world as a little one, as a baby, and, you know, exercising certain qualities of innocence, of playfulness, of just sponging everything in that um, is new, is exciting. Then I see um, summertime kind of as a threshold of uh, moving into um, adolescent, um, growing up, and becoming a person um, and, and, and exercising our autonomy, exercising our independency in, and, and growing into this, yeah, this person that is unique to us more and more, even though that uniqueness comes from the birth at the very beginning, but there's still dependency on other people helping us in the growing up and showing us the world, how they see it. And we may have a very different way of seeing the world ourselves. And so there may be also this um, uh, clash of, I see this world like this and you educate me, it's like this. And then I think ad adolescent summer season is a good time to kind of like fight for your own ideas and creating boundaries and you know creativity, sexuality is rising. So it has all these different qualities and yeah and, yeah and it, it, it's um kind of, of interesting how this this uh rebellion um uh, in in um adolescence has a correspondent in in nature with uh the flowers that that need to fall in order for the the fruits to to show up and yeah. uh it's a it's a radical transformation actually uh, and it's it's um it's an interesting way how also in life of of us humans these things happen although we don't really notice them most of the times yeah you know i i find that you know every every season or every every period of time in in our growing up has has its own challenges has its own um qualities has its own um, ways of how we are relating to our parents and how we're experiencing our parents or whoever is helping us growing up and being accompanying our life cycle around. And um, then to me, there's also a challenge of really tapping into all the different ages that are appropriate to that particular moment, you know, I mean, like tapping into the twenties and really being 20 and not wanting to be already 30 or 40 to measure up to a certain idea. Or, um, I mean, I remember as I was 16 and I wanted to go clubbing, um, I was pretty tall and I looked a little bit older. So I was always flat, flat I felt flattered if somebody said, that I was older looking because it gave me a certain freedom to do certain things. And, um, and I, it was the time where I also felt um, I like to be seen older um, for whatever reason. And I guess the, 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 there's potentially a certain time in our life when it's like, if somebody says, oh, you look a lot younger than you are, then that seems to be flattering at some point. Um, and I guess those are, um, I don't know, outside ideas, but for me internally, what I've been really, really noticing as I'm approaching the 50, it, it, I really wanted, and I did, dedicate a whole year to really look and feel deeply inside of myself what it means to, to own and to move into the 50 which in some traditions are called the crown years. So you're crowning yourself and actually some, some women intentionally let their hair grow gray to actually show their crown. Um, I have some friends who I have intentionally done that. And um, for me, my version is, um, I really felt inside of me, I like to tap into the 50 and know what that means to, to, to tap into autumn and to tap into the, um, into the season where 
on one level, I guess the leaves are changing colors. And I, I love Indian summer. I've been in, you know, in, into the Boston area, into the Indian summer, and actually found that to be the most attractive season when you see all the trees and yellow and orange and red and all these shades connected. And it brings such a um, intense quality. And I guess I'm taking that as a picture for myself to, to really connect to what does it mean to become 50 and, 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 and to let go of things that may be ideas of other people of me and, and really grow into the fullest of myself. As you can see in the picture behind me, I have my you know, allow my chest to blossom in the fullness of myself and and that be really blossoming out and i think that is a really practical question what what is the period of time i'm in am i really on it honestly tapping into that reality without losing all the energetic qualities that I have been exercising before. I still have a childlike, playful, um, funny side. Uh, I hope I will keep that forever anyways. Yeah, th this is kind of an, an interesting perspective to, to see um, our lives as, um, as being part of a of a cycle of um of a seasonal cycle of something that is blooming something that is uh, giving fruit and then something that's um it's starting to to uh, turn in, into something that is uh, apparently di diminished yet it, it has all this uh, experience in, ingrained that um are are not anymore that obvious and that um, um, in some way um, put out there but uh, express themselves in a more discreet presence mm. and have like a, a more delicate color not like um, shiny sparkling um, um, purple colors but um more browns and yellows and mm, those kinds of colors that the the leaves of the trees have when uh, when they are preparing for for autumn and then um the the um summertime also um I think it, it's um, even for for a lot of a lot of people um, maybe the, the most exciting uh, season, and uh, maybe this is um, one of the reasons that people cling to it so much. So that the the younger ones that are still in spring want to be in summer, and the the, the ones that got over uh, summer and moved towards autumn still want to be in in. The summer <laughs> cycle. Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's an it's an interesting at attraction point. <laughs> so <laughs> so when when a, a teenager says that uh, they are uh, twenty five, <laughs> or or another uh, person says they are thirty five. <laughs> yeah, I guess a whole industry is making a lot of money out of that. <laughs> idea that older people like to hang out into the summer season or like 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 summer yeah it's mm, a very good pr sort of speak so <laughs> it looks good <laughs> stay in it <laughs> <laughs> for as long as possible so. um yeah yeah you know, I mean, personally, for me, I can say definitely um, we're, we're joking around it, but I think there's that truth of um, you changing. Your, your body is, is developing. Your body's changing. When you're little, you know, it, it becomes very obvious when, when you, you, you tap into teenage years that the body all of a sudden starts to change and that there can be 
quite, quite dramatic, quite shocking, quite exciting. Um, it can come with many feelings. And, and what happens in the, um, kind of in the springtime, then um, there's also the shocking poss possible experience that in autumn time, the body changes and transforms again. And, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting um, exercise for me to actually um, accept all the different um, changes that are coming with the different ages and different seasons and, um, and to really embrace it rather than fighting or, or challenge it and say, oh, what can I do against it? I mean, I'm not saying that I'm hanging out on the sofa and eating potato chip because there's um, gravity and there's nothing I can do about the body changes. You know, I'm an active person, so I, you know, I, I, I work a lot in my, in, in my work. I move a lot. I, um, and you've been there, so we've been doing it together. I, I do yoga practice. I do um, Tai Chi practices. I do other movement practices. I run. I, I walk in nature. Um, so I like to stay in, in a way of healthy and fit in my body, but at the same time, I also have a, a, um, a very conscious awareness about there's, there are changes happening throughout different ages. And that's part of a natural process. And I've been pretty personally pretty lucky that I always felt pretty comfortable in whatever season I was in. I guess today I feel the most comfortable in my own skin. I don't think I want to be 20 again. I love the 20s. I think I had a really good, um, I'm not saying that was not a good time. I did have probably experience every time, every period in its own right and it had its own themes and it had its own exercises and its own relationships as well. And I'm, I'm actually looking back at them and thinking, yeah, that was a good period of time, but today is different and, it's, and I'm, I'm happy about how things moved and that I found a pretty, um, I wanna say recognizing, self-accepting, an acknowledging way of um, all of me, my mind, my heart, my emotions, my physical body, my vitality, and my, the place I am in, in this moment in my life. But it was also a very conscious decision to really tap from one to the next and kind of include and transcend from one season to the next. I made that a conscious practice. And I do have friends who actually say, oh, I'm not gonna even bother with my 50th birthday. I'm gonna be gone as if I never happens. I'm gonna hide myself from it. It's just, it's a good choice, but it wouldn't be my choice. I, my choice is I want to consciously tap into that and see how that is. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, the, the theories that say that time, time is relative. So it's a, it's, a subjective perception that we have <laughs> and for for our our civilization time is linear so it's it's the past present and future for other for other culture time is different yeah, um, yeah. for other cultures time is uh, circular time is um, has rhythms and uh, moves in spirals for instance or um, Time is un unlimited. Yes, because um, they they have as reference the, the present moment, and they don't see this time reference the way we uh, do it as as people living in in the West, let's say. Mm -hmm. Although I live in the east of the continent, so it's, <laughs> even that is relative. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but referring to uh, this model of of seasons that we have in life, mm -hmm. um, how can a person feel aligned with the seasons that 
uh, is experience, let's say, from the chronological perspective. Because as we discussed earlier, uh, a younger person wants to present herself or himself as being older. An older person maybe want to present himself as such or as a younger person. So th th these are all things that express in some way um, the saying that the, the grass is greener on the other side. So uh, it's better in the future, it's better in the past, but it's, it's not good at the present moment. Th that's the idea I think that is presented behind all of these things. Yeah, you know, for me, um, when I think of the model of the idea, I, um, I, I, I use it actually as a, um, almost like a meditation practice where I, you know, where, where I invite somebody to um, put themselves really in the middle and just kind of connect and in, inwardly and, 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 and just, you know, center and connect and to then begin um, usually I like to begin actually in the winter time where you imagine that everything is dissolved so everything is perfectly fine the way it is so winter is nothing to do anymore winter is just letting go and dissolving and um, we're tapping back into paradise um, so it's that season where um, everything can melt away that may be chronically stressful or where we're still kind of working ourselves towards something. And then I let people tap into the, uh, into the springtime where it's almost now I birth myself into this newborn space where I have a new beginning. I really have that innocent childlike new beginning and how does that quality feel like? And so I really stress on these qualities of innocence, of exploration, of curiosity, of being very open-minded, open-hearted, and open-sensed, and open-experienced. And then from there, fluidly move into that interesting summertime where there is this awakening of creativity and sexuality and the otherness and 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 you know finding your way of challenging and and there's also when you want to exercise your yeses and your noes and I want that and I don't want that and 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 get tapping into this quality which is a very different um, energetic quality to then move into the autumn season where I am feeling myself in a quality of I I really find myself in, in who I am. I really speak my inner truth. I feel my inner presence and I am standing on my feet. And um, this is about what I, from inside, radiate out to, to the world. And what I usually invite is always bringing all of these different energetic experience into the middle. And so that could be one way of meditating on a fluid way of experiencing ourselves in very different qualities that are all valid, that are all important. Um, but it's when is a moment for innocent childlike creativity, playfulness? When is a moment for this more juicy, energetic, vital, alive energy that is also saying no to this? When is a time for more of a having a you know a, a, a calm heart, a calm mind, an equilibrium, and and things are in perspective, and I really feel connected to my inner dignity, and present it to the world. Really, kind of show my symbolic crown to the world. And the other thing to me is. I think it needs peer groups that are reflecting in the best way what it means to be in a certain chronological time. So meaning that if I'm six year old, I think it's good to have some good six year olds around me. So I'm not growing up only with adults, with way older ones. 
but having peers and, and, and exercising those qualities in many dimensions. And um, same true when you tap into the teenage years that you have your peer group. Um, I've been noticing with, you know, with some families that they make their teenage kids their best friends. Um, and so that means that, you know, the, the, the kids are always exposed to way older people. That is not their peer. And I think it's important to, to have that energy um, in, 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 in exercise and in, in interaction and in play to, to really know what it means to be a 13 year old, to be a 14 year old and, and also find um, activities that best allow those times to be exercised in experience. And that's not the smartphone. Um, I think the smartphone and being behind the screen and doing TikToks and YouTube things, um, which our teenagers are exposed to a lot, is not really helping them in the, from, a, from a physical level to really exercise their, their teenage years. And I hope that we can invite them to, to find other exercise practices to really get those energetics too and it's um and and do it in experience not by somebody giving us any pictures about that because i think that's where your idea gets a little bit distorted mm -hmm. yeah and um also this has an, an impact this um engagement in in physical activities uh during these time periods have also an influence on, on the mental future state of the person. And um, being engaged in some kind of sports or, I, I don't know, um, trainings or practices is something that is of great importance for, for the future adult life. Because now I, I can see a lot of differences uh, among people that have had some some training or were engaged in in their teenage years uh, in some sort of of activities and those who did not yeah. and the ability to to cope with uh, stressful situations or to um, many changes that happen um, during the those times especially um is a lot higher for people that were engaged in in some kind of of sports in their childhood or in teenage years so they they have some um uh, resilience that was developed through the the engagement of the body that cannot be equaled by uh, of another mental activities at, at least in my perspective this is a very valuable resource to to create during the the childhood and teenage years yeah totally and and i love that you were mentioning the body i think the body is really helping us as a gps to let us know in its own development what is the truth what is the reality that i'm in you know and it's um and then finding the activities that will best um, nurture that time are fitting for me, fitting um, for my body. For example, I grew up with, um, since the age of three with um, ballet. And what I loved then intuitively the best was in the formal training, but interpretation. So whenever there was an open space where we could be anything, that's when I blossomed and it, it has um, actually become a resource that I'm exercising still till today, even in my psychological trainings, when I help people go through movement processes where I'm creating an open, st an open space where you can just explore yourself. But I was then already in the formal training as well. And I, I remember looking back, some of it was stressful because I think what happened there was on a three-year-old there was it was imposed 
a very technical training that is not really three year old packaged. Um, so there's already an, an older version um, in exploring yourself um, through a physical activity. And so, so for me that time was, and that physical activity had a double edged sword. It was a resource, it was a way of getting to know myself, but at the same time, it was also very stressful. Um, so to me, certain activities have to be time, um, age appropriate as well. So it's not that, that the expectation is not too high for a little body. And um, then I, I was also growing up from the age of six with horses. So horseback riding was one of the activities um, that I that accompanied me throughout my um, you know my early age till my teenage years, and that was a great um, education for me because the horses respond to you on such a energetic level. They they give you so much feedback. So I guess for me horses were a really good feedback um, mirror to, to really reflect myself back. So it was another peer group, but more of a nonverbal peer group that was good in the, in the growing up. And then I had my, you know, the neighborhood kids that I like to hang out with. So we, we did a lot of physical activities then, being outside, roller skating, um, I don't know, building huts together and doing all these things that where you explore yourself, where you carve out what it means in a, in a group of people together and, and having your space there. So all of these different times come with natural challenges and activities and through the body, I think is a very good reference in order to actually notice what is the fitting place for me and who I have become through the body experience, so. Yeah, and I think at, at some, some point, the, the body image that is expressed to, to the outside world also expresses the inner state or the inner season that a person finds herself to be in. So even if the maybe the chronological age uh, states something, the appearance may state another, and the way the person behaves can express a, a completely or congruent uh, behavior, but also a, a completely different behavior than than what would be expected. Um, if we judge by, by the appearance, by the way the person shows up to the outside world. And this may sometimes be a, a challenge to align these, these states of um, how a person feels at the inner level. What age do they feel, not what age do they have in their, in their um, documents and what age they present themselves to be or what is the appropriate behavior for that age yeah. because some, sometimes we we go back and forth in different um, times although we do that at the very specific moment in time um, there's there is a very great possibility that a lot of parts within us live in different times at the same time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I can have a psychological uh, or I can have a real age of um, 49, 50, and then find myself in a situation where all of a sudden my psychological or emotional age appears at five. Uh, and obviously, then I have this interesting challenge that my physical body and my um, driving license um, is in autumn season and my psychological, emotional um, 
experience is exactly on the other side of the model, which is spring. And that's an interesting place to be in um, because to me, if I confuse myself from being all of a sudden fully identified with a five-year-old, then that is a challenging place to be in. But if I can learn um, to locate myself and the actual age I have right now, and that there's a part of me for various reasons that had to stay in the innocent um, spring season because um, I had to move on with life because that part may have not been fully accepted and seen and blessed by other people, then the interesting thing that happens a lot of times is now I become that age that my maybe my parents or whoever took care of me had then. And now these parts are coming back into um, an interplay with other people, all of a sudden they get activated. And if I'm becoming aware of that, here's a great opportunity where can, I can actually bring this younger part of me, if I'm not confusing myself then with it, I can bring that younger part back to me across the opposite side from spring to autumn and invite from autumn my spring part back to me and say, hey, um, I made it all the way and I became that, um, that really um, ripened and, and, and also really grown, mature adult person that can now bring you into the inner family back home. And that is kind of a psychological integration or alignment that can also happen and, and which I would work with when I help people really locate them realistically on the, on the cycle of life, where are you right now in this moment? And, and, and then there's a relationship between those two elements. And once you have a relationship, then we can uh, realistically integrate and include the younger parts that we sometimes have to have left behind because they were maybe not very much accepted in society or in my family or wherever else. But now that's a nice thing about the season of autumn. Now I'm in charge. Now I can take care of it. So I can choose to say, Hey, hello, little one. I can invite you back into the family and make sense that you're really angry about this because somebody, somebody took your toy away and that wasn't nice. And I can hold your anger with a lot of grace and I can hold your anger with a lot of compassion because I know now it makes sense that this happens. And, and so that's a nice other possibility to, to look at the different levels of um, ages and, and different places. Yeah, we usually, um, I think we usually uh, look after the, the chronological age and expect um, people to uh, act as adults once they reach a certain age. Yeah. And a lot of the times we are surprised when we, we see how their behavior actually shows more of the behavior of a younger person, not really a, a person that is uh, mature as the, the age would, uh, would require or would be appropriate, let's say, for, for the age that they actually have. And um, I think maybe we, we go too easily through, through these kinds of, of uh, situations and take them for what, um, what they show on the surface and not what they really are. And either prefer to uh, make a statement about the person and not the behavior and disregard the need that is expressed by that specific behavior. So, um, in, in these kind of situations, 
what can we do when we notice this kind of of uh, behaviors let's say that that show the uh, the needs of a younger part of a person yeah i think that's um i mean first of all i think it's a great point to actually recognize i sometimes like to use the image that virginia says here gave which was sometimes you have um little people in big bodies mm -hmm. um, so my image is sometimes I may talk um, to a 60 year old and it's a big body and the behavior that I'm exposed to may be coming from a three year old. So it's a, it's a big body and a little person in it. And when I am, which, which I'm hearing you asking, if, if I'm receiving that behavior, um, I think they're, they're, they're different ways I can respond to it. I can um, maybe sense the, the emotion somebody's in. And if I'm coming from a very um, grounded place, I can be, you know, I can be holding my own ground and, and, and maybe reflecting back the emotions, like saying, I'm, I'm sensing you're really angry about something. I, I wonder what's really going on for you. I could reflect back just on the emotion. Um, because behind a behavior, there's an emotion that's driving the behavior. So somebody may be reactively feel, feeling extremely angry about something. That means though, I have to not be reactive to it. I have to stay in my own um, place and not take it personal. And, and just be a good mirror to the other person. Um, I could also um, get out of the line of fire. I can remove myself from, you know, being, being in that behavior. I can also, um, you know, call somebody on their behavior and saying, hey, um, your, your, your voice tone is very loud. Are you aware of that? Could you could you tune it down? Could you change that? Like reflecting back what somebody is doing and 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 letting them know about what I know and and sense if there is a change that we can make. That's another possibility. Um, I can just create a, a space, not doing anything. You know, just being with somebody for a moment if I can stay present with whatever is going on for them. I think it depends on what type of relationship there is. And also, you know, similar to an airplane, when you, when there's a case of emergency, you need to put the, 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 the mask on you first, if there's not enough oxygen and then help anybody else. So everything depends on what is the state that I can be in. Can I be in my full body with my full age in the presence of somebody experiencing something else? Then I have a whole range of things, emotional empathy, just creating a space for the other, reflecting lovingly back what I see them doing, um, I can share what happens for me in the face of them and their experience. I can just say, I feel um, this way when you do that. I can just give my own perspective of what's happening for me. And it has to be in a really calm and accepting relationship space. Otherwise, we're probably just reacting to each other because between reaction and response, there's usually a space. And that's usually connected to breath and a pause to be able to respond rather than to react. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe a, a context or, or uh, making a context clear before these kind of things can can show up in our interaction maybe that that 
can can be helpful just to, to have a, a, a space created previously um, a, a space of, of openness and a, a clear context before this um, younger parts can be activated by some some factors maybe that can be helpful at some point yeah i mean totally if, if, if you take a special context like a coaching session then you know i was i had a coaching yesterday um there is a space that we already contextualize and and, and establish where um i will actually say um from the beginning maybe you are in connection with some parts that um you know you you may want to create a new relationship with um so i may lay out um an invitation that i'm 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 potentially talking to multiple parts or multiple sides um of my client because when they want some support in some area it is because either way parts are conflicting or they're not integrated um, or they're very far away from each other and, and, and are needed. So it's a, it's a space that I can create in order to invite a different inner dialogue that is possible for my client to get a new understanding about themselves. And um, so, yeah, I can create a context where that dialogue is, as possible and where mm -hmm. there's an already set invitation for can I reflect some ideas back to you that may be different um, than your own perspective I was doing that yesterday where I was reflecting to my client a number of times back how she was talking about herself um, you know so there so was a lot about um, oh stupid me um, I shouldn't be doing that and you know and, and what I actually noticed was that when she leaned to the right side ha tilting her head to the right side she said oh I could actually just let it go and let things be and help my son just be a teenager and let him have his own experience and then she tilted to the other side to the left side and then she said um, but I need to control him and I need to make sure that he, get, you know, he, he gets his stuff done. And there was a different voice tone and a dis different rhythm. And she said, and, and stupid me, that's stressing me out. And, and, and then I don't have time to take care of myself. So I said, oh, okay. So when you're tilting this way, there's this fluid movement where you have a possibility to let him make his own experience. And when you're moving to this side, there's a part that is a little bit more judgmental and has certain fixed ideas how you would like to help him in with his exercises or his um, homeworks or whatever it is. And she's like, "Oh, yeah, I haven't I haven't noticed that." So so we established in a in a nice way the stupid me to oh here's a part that really knows how to judge and has certain ideas. It's a very different way than calling her stupid. And then also we were differentiating between that one side that has fluid ways and the other side that has a little bit more rigid ideas about how things are supposed to be done. And because she wanted more flexibility and she wanted more energy for herself, I was inviting her to maybe allowed to exercise a little bit more the the one side where there's more freedom to say oh he can just explore being a 13 year old and see what happens next yeah i think maybe um a lot of times we we confuse um these these um needs that some parts uh, express through certain ideas or or uh, beliefs or behaviors and take them as being part of, of the the person's identity and who that person is and um, respond to that rather than to that 
particular aspect that is manifesting at a certain point. Yeah. And um, especially if that behavior or that belief is um, totally dissonant with the life cycle a person is supposed to, to be in at that time. And somehow I think that the person uh, herself or himself can, can sense that sometimes. Yeah. And um, it still continues to, to reinforce that belief or that uh, behavior because they don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. And the, the awareness is sometimes not enough being aware that there is something that uh, needs special attention or another kind of attention that the person is is capable of giving is also causing um, some some issues also in relating to other people yeah you know, when I come back to the example, um, I think it wasn't a surprise that we were kind of in the same season. It's a new client I, um, who came and she was referred to me and we had a, like a pre-conversation and, and, and I because I usually like to have people just get to know me and then make a decision if it fits or not. And so we had a pretty extensive conversation beforehand and she said, yeah, no, I feel really comfortable and I, I really like to do the session. And interesting enough, we're kind of in the same age. And, and um, what I mean by that is that when, you know, you, you're looking for, and she's a very competent person that knows very, very well to move herself through the world. She's been doing a lot of competent stuff and actually developed a lot of great things, including raising her child and, um, you know, bringing... Um, herself into a really good position in her professional job and, and, and just really developing all sorts of things. Yet the reality was as she was seeing me, her self-esteem sense of self-worth was not very high. And, and, and I guess one big threshold was I, I, I'm asking support in which is a big one because she said i know myself by managing everything easily and i can you know hard work and figure it all out but i'm for the first time in a situation where that's not the case and so i guess somehow the universe brought us together and guess what we're kind of in the same season so she's looking maybe on one level also for a model that will reflect friendly back in a way, whatever you're looking for is inside of you. You have that. And I am maybe um, like a representation of your age you are in. And in our relationship, we can create a safe container where you can discover yourself to reopen the door for all these competencies that you may have shut down for whatever reason. And I'm happy to help you to reopen those doors. That was kind of the contract that we made. Um, so for me, it felt here's somebody that can kind of already reflect back um, that sense of self and help a vehicle that will allow to, to reopen and maybe even reminding her to all these old qualities. I mean, in the conversation, she remembered different times. Uh, you know, where there was this joyful um, self and something that she was actually looking for. And, and so we quickly opened to some, uh, and interesting enough, where I'm located, um, brought her to one of the memories of her adolescent time that she liked to go to parties and, you know, be the last person lock in the door. And and so there there's just this interesting um weavings that started to happen to bring all these resources together and then so at the end i said what were the the most helpful things for you to discover and she said you were giving me some direct ideas how i can experience myself in, in a in more fluid in a, in a better competency 
And what that meant was I was actually helping her to get out of a problem movie and more into the present moment and actually accessing herself as in her present age and giving her practical ideas how she can you know, exercise that for herself more deeply. So we've done, done a lot of physical exercises from um, Tai Chi and, 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 and practicing that together. And, and she said, yeah, I, I, I felt myself different. And now I have some practical ideas that I can hold on to. So I needed somebody who gives me re practices, rehearsal ideas, model something that I haven't figured out yet. So it wasn't just awareness. Oh, I'm, I'm in a difficult place. And I want that fluid joyfulness again. But I also need some ideas where, where I can tap into that again. And we were carving that out into our, in our relationship. Yeah, I think that's that's a um, wonderful resource to to access and to 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 be able to present and to to incorporate and to ad adopt as uh, as practice and as connection to to those kind of resources. Yeah. Eva, as we are um, slowly moving towards the, um, the end of this conversation for now, I would um, invite you to share with us um, one of um, your insights uh, at, at this um, stage of the life cycle. <laughs> um that you you are now and it can be anything that that comes to to you at, at this moment and you feel like sharing are you asking me what's the best thing about becoming 50 <laughs> <laughs> so um you know there are a couple of things that i find really intriguing and really important um one is I used to be somebody who wanted to make everybody happy. So my reference was very much external. Are you happy in my presence? Then I'm happy. Then I can be happy. Um, are, you, are, you, are you feeling comfortable with me? Then I can be happy. So my go-to um, in the before seasons was always looking for harmony, and looking for happiness for others. If they were happy, I had the right to be happy and, and feeling comfortable. So it was all about others, or mostly about others. Um, I'm noticing as I'm approaching this season, I'm, I'm changing seats a little bit. I'm adding in my own self into the seat uh, a lot more and, and taking the driver's seat. So I have become a lot more um, independent from the approval from others and how they like me to be a certain way and finding um, a much more aligned quality inside of myself um, and noticing I know what I'm doing right. I know what I know about myself and I'm okay about not knowing everything and what I know I hold to be true even though somebody else may be challenging that. And then to, to really own it and, and to say, I'm, this is what's best for me. And you may support it. That's wonderful. And if you don't support it, I don't need to make that happy anymore. I used to be very flexible. I mean, interesting enough, in my ballet trainings, I used to go for the full split in all kinds of direction. In that same metaphorical way, I... I could be very flexible in my behavior in order to try to invite people in to, to be in a positive relationship with me. And I don't feel that stress anymore. I'm, I like that. I like to be in good connections. I love great connections. I'm a very socially connected um, person. And it begins with me. And so finding comfortable in my own even though 
sometimes other people may not approve it and finding comfort in that discomfort has been a, a great learning over the last um, couple of years. And so I think I found my own authority to my own self. I've become my own queen to myself and not to others. But I think there is maybe even a, a reflection once I crown myself to my own self, it may even have a little bit of a ripple out other people seeing me as a certain um, leader in a certain area, but it, it's, it's not as important. I'm standing up to my own expectations and I'm standing up to my own inner wants and, and do that in the most um, inclusive and space giving and space holding ways. And the times of being, giving other people power to twist and turn my arm to tell me what's right for me um, are, pretty much expired and I'm really happy about that. Thank you for sharing with us uh, everything that you are so, so beautifully and so um, openly sharing. And I want to really thank you for, for the, the beautiful thing thing and being and energy and light that you are uh, for the beautiful person that I know <laughs> and I'm grateful for knowing and yeah wish you a happy birthday although your birthday is <laughs> in a few days <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and wish you all the, the best for this season and every season, every coming season, every passing season, <laughs> every season you, you choose to, to be <laughs> at a certain point <laughs> or in a certain aspect. Um, yeah, and hope that we are, we are sharing some, some good experience along the way yeah. in these, these different seasons. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, as Gregory Bateson liked to say, it takes two to know one. And, and so whatever you see in me, I know it's all in you. I can echo everything back that you are so generously um, sharing with me. So that's all yours as well. So thank you for that. And thanks for sharing the space together. Thank you.